Good morning, good morning, my Facebook friends, also my YouTube followers. This is your transformational coach again, Sarah Fernander. And today I want to talk about um, just doing your hardest, um, being the best that you can be in spite of, um, and also growing in the love of God. You know that we live in a world where... Um, there are all sorts of oppositions coming at us daily, but we have to remember and realize that God is our source, our strength, and our present help in the time of trouble. So let's get into it. We will start with a word of prayer. Most gracious and eternal heavenly Father, God, I just praise you, I magnify and bless your holy name for this segment. I pray that God that the hearers, their God, may be blessed and enriched. Dear Heavenly Father, that they may be uplifted, motivated, and encouraged. I pray to God that the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart, be acceptable in your sight. O oh God, clear our hearts, our minds, our spirit, dear God, to be receptive of your word. Because we know, dear God, that man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Let your word reside in us. Let us be quick to speak your word when we come against accusations and know that God that you're trying off our faith, work it patience. And so patience is a virtue that only you can give and we thank you for it in Jesus name. Amen. So um, today, like I said, we are talking about doing your best, working your hardest, um, living your best life um, to the best of your ability in these trying time. So I'm going to start with um, a few scriptures that I jotted down yesterday. And it says in first in 2 Tim Timothy um, 3 and verse 1, This know also that the last days perilous times shall come, for men should be lovers of themselves, covetous, boasters, proud blasphemers, um, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affections. Um, they will be truth breakers, false accusers. They will be in, um, in content, fierce, um, disobedient to parents. All of these are the things that they will do in their disrespect. They will not love God anymore. They will not follow his, his ways and his precepts. But God says in his word that if we follow after righteousness, if we follow after him, that he is able to sustain us, to bless us, and to keep us from all that is evil. Just a little prayer. I remember my mom used to sing this song, Just a Little Talk with Jesus Makes It Right. When we pray and we make our supplications unto God, he says that he hear, hears them and that he gives us the desires of our hearts. That every opposite, op, opposition and opposition and persons that are opposing us will be annihilated and destroyed because of their lack of knowledge. Um, I would have said in the last um, video clip that God said, even if it's one of us, there is more with us than be against us. Um, another scripture I read in Proverbs 24 and 19 says, Do not be envious of evildoers. You know, we look at the evil people and we say, They're prospering, man. I want to be like them. No. God says, Do not be envious of evildoers, nor desire to be with them. Don't desire to be with them. For their hearts devises violence and their lips speak of troublemaking. Why? Why want to be around evil men? Proverbs 24 and 1 through 2 says that we should uh, um, not follow them, but we should always seek to do good and not evil. Remember, do not be thou envious against evil men, neither desire to be with them. Don't desire to be with them. Remember that they shall all wither like the grass and they shall all be blown away like the shaft. I remember I used to like to quote this scripture in um, Psalms chapter 1. It says, 
Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the ways of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and thus he meditate day and night. We have to meditate on God day and night, or else this world will have us spinning around like tops. They will try to destroy us. This brings me to a point that um, I really want to say about how men can be so ev um, devious. I went... Um, on a girls night out with my nieces um last week and while we were there we noticed two ladies sitting down waiting on their dates the two gentlemen came and they sat down with them and um then i observed uh um the ladies asking for a drink so they ordered their drinks and one of the ladies um got her drink before the other one I don't know what she asked for, but anyway, her drink came ahead of the other ladies. So she said, let me taste it. When she tasted the drink, you can clearly see that she spat in it because when she removed her mouth from the glass, the slime from her saliva was touching the end of the, um, the end of the glass. And you know, you, it, you can see that she spat in it. It reminded me of Whoopi Goldberg when the white man was disrespectful to her and he, she still had to serve him. See, we have to be careful for nothing, but in all things, through prayer and supplication, let up requests be made known unto man. Because we are friends sometimes with the enemy and we are not even aware of the situation. But once we put our hands in the hands of the man that calms the water, he said it, we are in his hands. Who is there able to pluck us out? Who is Who dare the Almighty God to come up against who he has in his hands? No, he said he will fight our battles. He will deal with the situation. And so we have to be careful for nothing. I was telling one of my um, co-workers about the situation and she started to remember a friend of hers from church and she said that the lady got a promotion on the job and you know that that's that spurs anger and jealousy on the job um first you was my co-worker now you won't be bossing me around those kinds of stuff and so she felt as though the persons who she went out with after she got the promotion had invited her because they had um, respected the position and that they were happy for her not knowing that they were going to spike her drink that night um she went there all dressed up and everything ready to have a good time and boy did she had one the lady said that um she drank the drinks and she remembered nothing after that but video clips went circling around with her stripping herself and just doing all kind of lewd stupid Things. and she was in tears and so disheartened she lose, lost her position and everything like that over the incident which was not her fault by the fault by the way but that goes to show how you have to be strong in this world you have to be strong you have to have eagle's eye god said to be careful for nothing i was telling another co-worker of mine the other day i like to talk about the lord i said when god said nothing you know what nothing is Nothing is, don't even exist. Nothing. He said, be careful for nothing. He didn't say be careful for everything or about everything. Everything is something which you could see. But he, he knew exactly what he meant in his word when he said, not even the things that you can phantom. Could I get a witness? What you can even phantom or imagine in your mind, be careful of it. Because... Your adversary, the devil, is like a raging, roaring lion, seeking souls he may devour, and he's seeking your soul every day. It says the spirit bears witness with the spirit, and the two um, spirits are making, um, are, are toggling, they are, they are warring daily, good and evil, good and evil, good and evil. Every day, it's a battle inside our hearts, inside our minds to do good, and then even when we choose to do right, there's a battle because what? Our good is evilly spoken of. Have you ever not done anything to somebody and for some strange reason, they don't like you for whatever reason and you're trying to figure out in your mind, I've been nice to them, I've been kind to them, I've been supportive, I, I have helped them financially in every way and yet they are talking down about me, they are blaspheming me they are putting me through the dirt and you're wondering why it is because men's heart are evil i am um, remember the word of god says that we are 
all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, that we have all been created or born and shaken up in iniquity. The chastisement, only the chastisement of God's son's peace gives us that ability to know or have that um, type of feeling when we do something wrong that we need to correct it. So therefore, we need to remember daily that the trying of our faith will get patience. Have that patience. Patience is something that we don't have the time to deal with because this is a microwavable time. This is a time when we need things now. It need to come. It need to come. It need to come. But let me let you know, had I been able to do what I'm doing now on, in this transformational coaching at the age of 19, at the age of 20, I hadn't even gone through nothing yet. So what could I possibly have told you? Yeah, I might have gone to school and probably learned counseling or something like that. But no one is more professional on the job. What is considered a professional is a tried and tested individual. That's why somebody can come on the job with a college degree, bachelor's, associate's, master's, and still not be as proficient in the task that they are put to do. Why? Because if somebody has been doing that from they were 16 and now they are 40 or 50, you know that they have been tried, tested. They have been dealt with. Good and evil have been uh, um, handed to them and they have earned their accreditation. They have earned their place there. So not only do they know what is in the book, but they have experienced, hallelujah, experienced what was in the book. So therefore, we call them professionals. No one can come to God and tell him how to make man. Because God is the maker of man. Can I get a witness? God is the one who breathed into men. They have people now, scientists, saying they are trying to make electronic humans. They can't ever reach to the level where God has us. Why? Because we are not electronic. God has put a spirit being in us that even when this body is gone, the spirit is still here and present. You know, many persons, as I think about all these youth um, violence and gang banging and stuff like that, I was telling one of my co-workers, why every time you go on YouTube or go on Facebook, you see people getting into accidents, killing one another, fighting, and it's recorded how is that possible? That tells me that that person was not there at that appropriate time. That person was there because they knew exactly what was going to happen. And they wanted to record it, wanted to record it for whatever purpose it is. And that's what I'm talking about, that men are lovers of themselves. They are proud, boasters, blasphemers, people who are angry and evil and want to do bad to others. Why? Because they don't have the love of God in them. God says in his word that he so loved this world that he gave his only begotten son. When you can give and give and give and give and that person does not appreciate it. That's what I'm talking about. God gave his son to die for us as sinners. And yet, they, some people said they don't believe that there's a God, but they're alive. Mm. God created you. God allowed breath to be in your body. God allowed your mother or father to get together and to hug you. You were a part of God's creation and you don't believe that there's a God. I don't understand it. So where did you come from? I'm grateful. I'm thankful. Every day you get up, you know how you got up. You just think you just get up out of the bed and it all happened on your accord. No, there are many today that could not wake up. God is the one that gives us life and he gives it, gives it to us abundantly. We need to be grateful. We need to be thankful. We need to be uh, appreciative. My home, I got this home and it was all because of God and I give him the honor, I give him the glory. It may not be a castle on the top of the hill, but it is mine and it's all mine because of my um, faith in God, because of my love of my children, the love of my ex-husband, the way that I, I conducted myself and God said, hey, I am going to bless Sarah. 
I'm going to give up. And no weapon that is formed against me shall prosper. No weapon that is brought against me or my children or anything that God has given me. He said, it shall not prosper. Now it's going to form, but it shall not prosper because he said he has given his angels charge over us that we will not even snag our foot or dash our foot against the stone. Because he has already sent his angels to guard over us, to protect us in all our ways. He said that he will give us the desires of our hearts according to his riches and glory. He will bless us above exceedingly abundantly above that which we are able to ex uh, um, receive. He said, give and it shall be given unto us. You know, people like to say karma, but I don't believe it's karma. It is the law of God. It says what you give, you're going to get back. If I remember when I used to rent before I got my home, everywhere that I go, you can ask any of the persons that I've rented from. I would paint those people places. I will put flowers in their garden. I will treat their place like it's mine. When I go there with my children and I leave that building, that building looks like no one was ever there. I fix whatever was destroyed or whatever. I do not and I have not ever been a person. I am at a school right now and I would go in the bathroom and if that bathroom needs to mop and that's not my job, I mop. If I go and I find a faucet that is leaking and I think I know how to fix it because I'm a mother and a single mother and I've learned how to do little tricks of the trade, I fix it. And I don't go to my boss telling her everything that I do. No, because at the end of the day, there's a God that sees and knows everything, every little thing. And persons do not understand when you are blessed and highly favored. It is not because God is unfair, but because he sees the little things. I remember when I was in school, in primary school, there's a song that says, Jesus sees the, li the, the little ones like me, me, me. And Jesus loves the little ones like you, you, you. Little ones like you, Jesus loves him too. Jesus loves the little ones like you, you, you. And it goes on and on. Jesus sees the little ones like you and me. Jesus cares for little ones like you and me. Little ones like us, we sit upon his knees what it is is not in actuality us sitting on his knees but the blessings that flows from the lord upon our head upon our hearts into our lives we have um things that we didn't even toil for i've had cars given to me i ain't had to pay a dollar but they see me struggling with my children when i was much younger and they say hey you need a car and you know what? I'm going to get a new car. I was going to sell this car, but I think that the Lord want me to bless. <laughs> God want me to bless you with this. And they gave it to me. I have had times when I had gone and soon into churches and I said, Lord, this is all that I have. Like the widow with the mites. This is all that I have. It might not have been thousands and thousands of dollars, but it was all that I have. And I gave it. And God bless me with persons who would come to me and say, Sarah, I want to bless you with this money for no reason. And they just give it to me. No strings attached, nothing. When you are blessed and highly favored, I remember a gentleman um, that saw me when my children was younger. He said, Miss, you remind me of my mommy. And I don't know you, but I would like to help you with your load. And he would see me coming from the grocery store or whatever and would always pick me up, um, coming from the laundromat, wherever. And he would always call me. He never knew my name because I never told him. And so since he never knew my name, you know what he called me? He said, he would say, hey, blessed and highly favored woman of God. That's, that was the name that was given to me. By this young man. And he wasn't a Christian. This man used to smoke dope every time I see him in a different car. He had guys following him all over the place. He used to tell them, hey, anybody touch your children, anybody touch this woman, y'all watch out for her. Watch out for her. I never, I never knew or did anything for this man in my life. But God, this is the... This is why I tell you, when you serve God in spirit and in truth, and God watches your every move and you don't broadcast what you do for people or broadcast what you have done for others or, or in your life and the struggles that you've gone through and you still wear them with a smile and be grateful and thankful to God, he sets up people. We are called, they, they are called destiny helpers. 
that he sets destiny helpers in your way that you can get where you have to go. You ever heard or seen on Facebook the um, literature or the little snap that went around that goes around that says people come into your life for certain reasons, some to teach you a lesson, some for you to um, teach them a lesson, some come into your life to make you a stronger person. Some people come into your life to grow with you and some only come for a short time. And what that ever that short time is, like they say, if it's the rain coming down on the tree so that the leaves can be wet and the, it can be nurtured, then that's what's their place. If it's they that, that they were the sun that was supposed to shine so that the tree may be able to make it, it do its photosynthesis, the same thing in your life. If that person came to take you, you, you may be on a job and you say to yourself, this person got me fired. But you don't know what God was protecting you from on that job. And that firing has protected you from what you would have been having to deal with. Um, the, it might be a circumstance where you were put in a community where you say, hey, these people aren't like me. But your light is shining there. Remember that darkness cannot overcome light. Light overcomes darkness. So you were put there to be that role model for people to emulate, for people to look and recognize and say, hey, there's something different about Sarah. There's something different about Margaret. There's something different about Sharon. There's something different about Casey. I don't know where it is, these names coming from, but I'm just saying there's something different about Mark. There's something different about Dion. There's something different about Matthew. There's something different about someone that is going through. And when you're going through it, remember, he said, after you have been tested and after you have been tried, remember Job? Job was tested and tried and tell his own wife, tell him, curse God and die. You might as well just do it because everything just going contrary. You're losing everything and you sit unto death. So just die one time. Give it, just, just go. And she, he said to his wife, woman, thou art foolish. Get behind me. Why? Because God, he knew that as long as he had life in him, God has a purpose. And God had a plan for him. And he saw his whole life full circled around. God can make your sad places. The scorns that people say against you. Oh, you, you're poor. Oh, you live in a bad place. Oh, you'll never amount to anything. Oh, you're going to lose everything that you have. They're making all kind of mockery. They mock Jesus. But on the day when Jesus went for his 40-day fast and Satan came up against him, he said, if you think. But God was already his, his, his father. He was already king of kings and lord of lords. Say, if you think that you are the son of God, jump from this high mountain and God will send his angels to protect you. What did Jesus say? Jesus said, tempt not the Lord thy God. You have to always have a quick, quick answer for the, for the demons that are in these people. Have a quick word because God says that his word is life. You will succeed. I will succeed. I will achieve. I will progress. I will have the things that I have. My children will be more blessed than I was. They will go further than I've ever dreamed of. They will have and not lack. They will be blessed and highly favored. Why? Not because only of my words, but because they are the words of God. I know the plans I have for you. Say it, not Sarah. Say it, the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. All he wants is for us to step out in faith and do what he has asked us to do. Every morning ask him, Lord, what is thy will for my life? Lead me, guide me, direct my path that I may walk after you. That when the hardest times in my life come, when the trials in my life come, that I will be able to be standing strong, immovable, and ever abiding in the works of God. This is my nugget for you today. Remember, a little bit of love goes a long, long way. A lot of persons that want to hurt you, all they need is love. Do not follow up on their evil against you, but just show them love. And after a while, they will soften up and know that, hey, love covers a multitude of sin. And without love, 
we cannot grow. Just how the trees cannot grow without water and sunshine, we cannot grow with love. We need connections. We need somebody to, on our side to show us that, hey, I love you and I expect the best for you. Nothing more than the best. Let's always say something positive to somebody. Do not bring them down. Do not push them aside. Do not criticize them. Do not call them names. You know, just continue to encourage them and enlighten them and let them know that you love them. And if you don't have anything good to say, like my mom, Alberto Fernando, used to say, if you don't have nothing good to say, then be quiet. Don't say nothing at all. Leave it in the hands of Jesus and just pray them through it. This is Sarah Fernando signing out, telling you that God loves you and he cares for you and he wants only the best for you and he will continue to love you all the days of your life. And you're going to make it, you know. You're going to get there. You're going to get there and that your latter will be greater than your former or your past. So signing out. <laughs>